Uh-oh, you're having a bad day. Those two red dots on your ankle look really bad, buddy. Looks like you've been bitten by a snake. You have no idea if it was venomous or not, so here's what might happen next. If it wasn't venomous, consider yourself lucky. You're probably gonna be fine. Still, any snake's fangs carry thousands of bacteria on them, and when they penetrate the skin, these little pests get into your blood to wreak havoc inside your body. The most terrifying of them cause tetanus, a severe condition that's incurable if you don't get medical help in advance. Worse still, you might be that unfortunate person to have an allergy to snake saliva. Like the bees or peanuts, oh yeah, peanuts can be shady. When enzymes in the saliva mix with your blood, your body starts trying to get rid of them. It doesn't realize it's basically fighting itself, so the conflict quickly escalates and you begin feeling nauseous and weak. Eventually, it becomes hard to breathe, and you may even faint. So, even if you've been bitten by a non-venomous snake, call for help pronto. Then, there's a worse scenario. The snake was indeed venomous. Every snake species has its own kind of venom that acts differently from others. Let's see. Ah, it can affect either heart and nerves, muscles, or blood vessels. It always starts with a sharp pain at the place of bite. The snake opened its mouth wide, punctured your flesh with its two upper fangs, and injected its venom through the channels inside them. The venom goes straight into your bloodstream, and that's when the real black magic begins. If the bite marks are clearly seen on the smooth skin and there's nothing else, it might have been a crate. If the bite starts swelling, it was probably a cobra. You start feeling dizzy, hot, and sweating right away. But that's not venom yet, it's you. You're scared of seeing those bite marks, and the hormones adrenaline and cortisol rush from your adrenal glands into your blood to make you blush and tremble. Your heart's beating faster now, Uh uh-oh, helping the venom spread more rapidly. Soon, you'll start feeling stomach pain and cramps. The toxic enzymes in the snake's venom are reacting with your blood, getting to internal organs and muscles. They're all close to each other, so the toxic stuff hits them quickly and aggressively. And when the venom has gone through your liver, kidneys, and heart, which takes about 15 minutes, it spreads to the nerve endings. It's at this point you begin losing touch with reality. Literally. At first, your eyelids will become increasingly heavy. Eyelid muscles are some of the smallest in the body and have few nerves, which makes them an easy target for venom. Then the toxins go on and on through your circulation, filling your smaller blood vessels like a sponge. And as they do, nerves stop functioning from your head down because they're controlled by the brain. It's just getting worse, isn't it? From your eyes, the numbness spreads across your face. Your lips and cheeks become tight, making you look as if you're annoyed with something. Within an hour or two, you will lose the ability to speak and see. The nerves in your face will have turned off completely. But the effects of the bite will go further down, short-circuiting your tongue, lower jaw, neck, diaphragm. Oh boy. When this happens, unfortunately, you're almost beyond rescue. If the diaphragm stops responding, your lungs can't function properly and you stop breathing. And we really shouldn't do that. If you're lucky enough, though, the bite could be light, and then the numbness will not affect your vital systems. It'll still spread from the head down your whole body, but won't be able to get deep inside, going through your top layer, so to say. You might lose feelings in your fingers and toes, your skin, and even be unable to move properly. But if you can see and breathe, the symptoms might go away by themselves in a few days. Don't bet on that, though, and call the ambulance as soon as you realize something's wrong. Finally, all this may be completely irrelevant to you, because what you feel is not numbness, it's heartache. Both cobras and elapids have a type of venom that goes straight for your heart. When it gets there, and that's pretty soon, it might make the main muscle of your body beat faster or slower, as well as causing irregular beating. This is a huge strain on your heart. You know what to do. Other muscles can also be affected, especially by sea snake venom. It has special toxins that target muscles, and as your eyes get heavy, you might also feel cramps first in your stomach and then rapidly spreading to your arms, legs, and chest. You will have trouble moving because your muscles will grow stiff 
and touching anything would become an ordeal because of the tenderness. In the end, the venom may make you lie in bed and wait until it goes away. If it goes away. Boy, let's just pile on, shall we? Now, if you look at the bite mark and see it swelling, and there's blood from the two punctures, it means you've been bitten by a viper. This venom acts differently and is even more terrifying. Oh gee. Its molecules are larger and can't spread so quickly in the bloodstream. That's why they head for your lymph nodes and act from there. As a result, the venom is slow and painful. At first, you will only feel scared and dizzy because of that. Then, after 15 minutes, the venom will start spreading through your body, beginning from where the viper bit you. The thick and viscous substance will mess with your blood, making it clot and causing bruises. The higher it goes, the more of your body it affects. But this progress is slow compared to the effects of cobra and elapid bites. If you don't get medical help, you will notice the swelling growing every hour. As the venom works its way through your lymph, it will make it go against you, causing even more swelling. Lymph is your body's primary defensive barrier. It's a fluid that contains white blood cells which fight diseases. Venom gets into their ranks and causes disarray. White blood cells attack it to no avail, and it spreads ever further. And when the vile thing reaches lymph nodes, they swell, desperately trying to get rid of the intruder production of lymph increases, and the bitten part of your body gets more swollen by the hour. Depending on the potency and amount of venom, your limb will grow twice in size by day 2 or 3 from that bite. Since we're talking about your ankle, it's your whole leg that will get afflicted, foot to hip. You won't be able to walk, of course, and sitting will also be off limits. The only hope at this stage is to lie in bed and try not to move. Even this late, there's still a chance your body will cure itself. But if there's any possibility to get you to the hospital, what do you think? Yeah, you should still do it. What the heck? When bitten by a snake, you might panic and do it all wrong. So increase your chances of survival by calming yourself down. Fear will make your heart beat faster, pumping blood through your body and with that, the venom. It still needs time to reach your circulation, so stay calm and lie down, keeping the bitten limb below your heart. Gravity will do the job then. Don't ever try to suck the venom out of the wound. It spreads too rapidly for you to help yourself. You won't even get a drop of it out this way, but only increase your heart rate again by straining. Put away that knife and never try to cut the bite to let out the venom. Like I said, it's already in your blood, and you can make matters worse by cutting. If you didn't have infection inside the wound, you might get it from that knife. Applying cold won't help either. Cold restricts normal blood flow, making venom stay where it is and doing more damage to a single place. Venom might also make tissues more vulnerable to frostbite. You could end up losing a limb. Same goes for tight bandages and tourniquets. When blood flows freely, it lets the venom spread, of course, but also dilutes it, making the substance less potent. The bite might not be as dangerous as you think, but by applying a tight bandage, you can triple its power. Hey look, you made it! You're in the good place! Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Never mind.